These fires may have you thinking about your own family's safety. Do you have a working smoke detector in your home? Well, did you know that there are actually two different kinds of smoke detectors? Not a lot of people know that. Tonight, in the KXLY4 Focus, Mike Gonzalez is here with why not knowing the difference is dangerous. Yeah, this, this couldn't be more timely with all these fires, you know, and as we delved into this, it got more and more amazing what people didn't know. And with this story, we weren't trying to prove that smoke detectors don't work because they do, and you definitely need them in your home. But here's the interesting thing. There are two type of smoke detectors, and knowing that could save your life. Fires aren't what they used to be 20, 30 years ago, where it's uh, all paper and, you know, you just got your normal byproducts, you're getting synthetics and you're getting cyanide, you're getting all kinds of stuff being off gas. According to the CDC, nearly 3,000 people die in fires every year in the United States. You may be surprised to learn that most victims die from smoke or toxic gases, not from burns. That You get all this carbon monoxide and stuff into your system and, and basically choke. July 29, 2005. 55-year-old Karen Usler accidentally starts a fire from a lit cigarette and dies in her Spokane apartment. Later that same year, former Spokane County Sheriff Deputy Rick Starr was found dead in his home after an accidental blaze is set in his kitchen. December 3, 2006, smoke and flames engulfed the home of three-year-old Taylor Dolly. Three days later, she dies from her injuries. Investigators say in all these tragic incidents, smoke inhalation was a major factor in their deaths. This type of smoke detector is in most homes across Washington and Idaho. It's called an ionization detector. The scary thing is, it may not be protecting you from smoke at all. That's because ionization alarms respond faster to flaming fires, like those involving paper or flammable liquids. But remember, most people die from smoke and toxic gases, not from big flames. At nighttime when you're asleep, you, your senses kind of shut off for the night, and, and you're not going to smell or feel anything going on. And Like this horrific fire in Moses Lake that killed Daniel Villarreal and two of his children this past September. While the exact cause has not been determined, investigators believe a baseboard heater touching a couch may have started the fire. A smoke detector was found in the home, but it's unclear if it was working. Investigators believe five-year-old Natalie and her seven-year-old brother Dante were overcome by smoke well before fire consumed the home. Their father Daniel died trying to rescue them. The important thing to know is there's another type of smoke detector called the photoelectric alarm. It alerts you much faster to slow burning smoky fires. We came here to the Spokane Fire Department's training center to test both alarms out. Our first test involved an open flame fire. The three detectors on the left are ionization smoke alarms. On the right, a carbon monoxide detector and two photoelectric alarms. Just two minutes after setting this chair ablaze, the carbon monoxide detector and three ionization alarms go off. After several minutes of waiting, not a sound from the photoelectric alarms. But remember, photoelectric alarms are designed to go off in smoky, smoldering fires, not fast flaming ones. Test 2 involves a smoldering fire. Chief Bob Hanna sets up four brand new smoke alarms I purchased the day before. Two are ionization detectors, two are photoelectric detectors, and there's a carbon monoxide detector as well. The chair is set on fire using a soldering iron to create a slow burning smoky fire. 11 minutes in, the smoldering starts. After 20 minutes, heavy smoke is making it hard for us to breathe. 23 minutes in, only the photoelectric detectors have gone off. The ionization detectors are silent. Five minutes later, because of so much smoke, we exit the building. Almost 30 minutes into our test, the ionization detectors never go off. As we demonstrated here today, they both have, uh, each type has a specific uh, uh, type of fire that it uh, works off of. Uh, obviously, if we can get a combination in, it serves both purposes where we have a smoldering fire and a flame fire. Would you choose one over the other? Obviously, I'd choose the combination one because then I'm covered both ways. A message he wants everyone to hear.
and you can find dual detectors at most major hardware stores. And here's how you tell. It's right on the outside of the package. They cost anywhere between $25 and $40. And, and here's the thing, guys. Most people do have the ionization alarms in their home, about 80% of the people they estimate. And you got to remember, about 80% of the people die from the smoke and toxic gases. So Chief Hanna, he wanted to stress, don't get rid of your ionization alarm if it's working. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get yourself the photoelectric alarm so you get that dual protection. But obviously, the best thing to get is the, combination. the combination. So really an eye-opening story for me because like we talked about when I started this, it was like, oh, another <laughs> alarm story, but really important. And we really hope it helps. And then you changed them in your house too. Yes, and of I, this I have changed them because it, it's scary. Yeah. So you really need to get the, the combination alarm, everybody. All right, ask for it from Santa or yeah. something because it's <laughs> worth spending the extra money. It is, for sure. spend that extra money. Right, Mike, thanks. All right.